We are making amazing ribs today. Sous vide ribs with the sous vide cooker. This recipe, super simple, perfect for the first time. These flavorful ribs are tender and delicious, ready to fall off the bone. Welcome to Sweet Spot, sous vide. The French phrase for under vacuum. I can tell you what it is not, and I can tell you what it is. Sous vide is not the girl that didn't exist in high school, that I never dated, and that I could never pronounce her last name correctly. And the fact that I couldn't pronounce her last name correctly, my brother always teased me. As a matter of fact, all of my brothers teased me. Sue who? In reality, Sue, Sue who? Sous vide cooking is where you place food into a plastic bag, under vacuum or not, you put it into a water bath, and you cook it at a lower temperature for an extended number of hours, at exactly the right amount of time, resulting in perfectly cooked food. You've probably had food prepared this way at a restaurant, and you didn't even know it. How do you cook sous? Sous, sous who? Sous vide? You need a precision cooker. Not necessarily an expensive one, just one that maintains temperature exactly correct. And you need a container for the water bath, such as a pot. We start by making a rib rub, pretty simple. Brown sugar for sweetness, paprika and black pepper, a lot of black pepper, for a little depth of flavor and heat. Garlic powder, because garlic powder tastes so good, and salt, kosher salt, for flavor, and to keep our ribs nice and moist. We combine these all in a bowl. And stir the ingredients together with a fork. Or better yet, use your fingers to thoroughly combine the ingredients and break up any lumps of sugar. Set this aside, sheet pan, and ribs. I use baby back ribs. No, I don't. I prefer to use St. Louis cut ribs rather than baby backs. Definitely meatier. Cut off any obvious fat, which these look pretty good. Position the ribs with the bone side up. We need to remove this thin white membrane on the back of the ribs. I use the handle of a spoon, nothing with a sharp edge because we don't want to cut this. And by the way, removing this makes it much more pleasant to eat. We want to tuck the spoon along the side of one of the bones. Just squeeze it in there under the membrane, but not into the meat. And then slide your fingers around. Paper towel makes this very handy. And if you get this off in one piece, terrific. If it takes more than two, doesn't really matter. We work this away. This is actually the hardest part of making ribs. Once that's complete, now it's time to put on the rub, rib rub. There's probably enough for two racks of ribs in this rub, so use a spoon rather than your hands because you're gonna get all messy. About a quarter of it on each side of the ribs, be generous. Just rub it in, really work that salt in, along the edges and the sides. Flip the ribs over and do the other side. Cut the rib rack in half. Then place each half of the ribs into a gallon-sized plastic bag. To add some smokiness to the flavor, into each bag add a teaspoon or less of liquid smoke. Don't go heavy-handed on this. And it turns out a good brand of liquid smoke only has two ingredients, water and smoke. Into our water bath container, and I'm just using a pot, we insert the sous, 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 who? sous vide machine, precision cooker, attach it per manufacturer's instructions to the side, fill with water, but make sure we don't overflow. We stick in our bag of ribs, it's not sealed. 
Then dip it down so the water pressure on the outside of the bag pushes all of the air out of the bag. And once done, seal it up. If you have a vacuum sealer, I recommend you go ahead and use it. I'm just showing you how to do this if you don't have one. Not too packed together too tightly. I like to clip them with a clothespin or some device to keep them under the water. And if you're using a vacuum bag, it doesn't matter how they go in, uh, but you do want the contents of the bag under the water level. For the Ziploc style bags, I like to leave the zip part above the water line if at all possible, just in case. Then we plug in and power on the Sioux. Sioux who? Sioux who? Sioux who? Sous vide. Follow your manufacturer's instructions and set the temperature to 165. That's 165. And off we go. It's important that this is going to sit at 165 for the full 12 hours. When the Sioux, 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 Sioux vide has reached temperature, you want to check it for a little accuracy, just to make sure we are truly at 165. Then I want to cover this with a piece of aluminum foil as tightly as you can, because we want to keep down evaporation. And that's it. Set a timer for 12 hours. You can use the timer on your suit. Who? Sue? Who? Sous vide? Or any other timer. You do want to check the water level once or twice over those 12 hours just to make sure it hasn't gone down too far. Otherwise, you're good to go. 12 hours later, lights and our ribs are cooked. Power off the sous. Sous who? I don't know. Sous vide. And pull out the ribs. They're hot, by the way, very hot, 165 degrees. On a rimmed baking sheet lined with aluminum foil, place your ribs with the cooking juices poured off. Then into a 350 degree oven to bring them fully up to temperature. But I should mention, if you're not ready to eat them or serve them when they come out of the Sioux, Sioux who? Sioux who? Sioux who? Sioux vide. That's fine. Leave them in the plastic bag or vacuum bag and then plunge them into an ice water bath. It's cold. The ice bath, as chilling as it may be, will reduce their temperature rapidly to reduce any chance of bacteria forming. Then you can store them in the refrigerator for three or four days or in a freezer as long as you'd like. Then when you're ready to serve them, pick up where we're leaving off. Put the defrosted, if you froze them, put the defrosted ribs onto a pan or from the fridge into the oven, 350 degrees to get them nice and hot. Nice and hot. I'm going to smother them with a store-bought barbecue sauce because I find store-bought pretty darn good. My favorite brand, Sweet Baby Ray's, but don't say that I didn't tell you that. Anyway, put it on pretty heavily. Use a brush, or I actually prefer a back of a spoon and then we're going to broil this. I like to put on two layers of barbecue sauce. Layer on, broil it away, bring it out, flip the ribs over, more sauce, sauce the second side, broil it away, more sauce, flip it back over, flip them over so the meaty side is up for the last coating of barbecue sauce. Then back into the broiler for one more minute and we're ready to go. Tell me these don't look good. Slice them up. Taste test time, my absolute favorite part. These things, well, they smell delicious, they look delicious, and you know, quite honestly, they're pretty easy to cook. And now, the bite. Still a little bit hot, but that's my fault. Super tender, delicious. Just a hint of smoke to it from the artificial smoke that is real smoke. 
actually like my ribs where the meat doesn't quite fall off the bone. You have to give it a little tug. These are particularly meaty, which is why I like St. Louis cut ribs rather than baby backs. A little bit of heat from the dry rub, from the pepper, from the paprika. Perfectly cooked through. I love the almost burnt glaze on the outside. And I'm eating these with a white shirt on. The sweetness of the barbecue sauce, totally on the outside, melts so well with the porky flavor of the ribs. The only ribs I like better than these are the ribs I make on a smoker. I haven't made the video yet, but when I do, the link, it's gonna be right there, right there. But these sous vide ribs, sous vide, are so yummy. These are so good. Hey, if you enjoyed this video, give us a thumbs up. That thumbs up means a lot. It's showing your support and your love. Share this video with your friends. Leave a comment down below. And if you're not a subscriber, now is the perfect time to subscribe. Click the subscribe button down below, then click the bell icon. The bell icon will make sure that you're notified with each new video from Sweet Spot. Until next time, this is it for Sweet Spot.